I honestly have goosebumps from the 30-year Just Do It campaign by Nike. This was such a good strategy to have used, especially with Colin Kaepernick emerging as the new face of Nike 30 years on. Now, to discuss this further and to get to the grassroots of all the controversy surrounding this campaign, we have a PR expert joining us today, and that is no other than Miles Igwe. Thank you so much for joining us on set. Thank, Thank you for, you for having us. me. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. How did you feel when you saw this video? Um, I have to say it, it resonated with me. It was very, I could connect with it, you know. I think it was very homegrown and it was well, it was very well made. Because you're a Nigerian-American, yeah. so you've lived in both systems, you understand the American system. What do you think this currently means to the American people? Um, I think, first of all, what a time to be alive. Second of all, um, it's about time. It's about time that um, a lot of facts are being brought to the table and are being shown. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of Nike taking that chance and being able to connect with the actual human being and not just treat everybody like a consumer. Amazing. We know that this is not the first time that we've seen issues like this. I mean, Colin Kaepernick sitting out the national anthem. He did that to lend his voice to all the issues that affect people of color in America. And I, he's not the first. We've had the likes of the Muhammad Ali, we've had um, Tom Smith and the likes of them, even Serena Williams as well, and Wayne Wade. Several people have lent their voice towards ensuring that the push for issues concerning equality and all the issues that black people have to deal with. Now, let's talk about the effect as a PR person. What effect does it have on the career of the people? We've seen a lot of them lose their jobs. We've seen a lot of them being criticized and getting backlashed. How really, what, how, what, what, what impact would you say that this has on the career of the person who's using their platform to speak up against inequality? Um, I feel like before you embark on that journey, you know the consequences. You know, okay, this might have some backlash. This might cost me this. This might cost me that. Um, it's for you to go in headstrong. And in regards to branding and as a PR person, if my client was to embark on such a journey, what we would do is that we would create a strategy that would surround him as an actual influencer and him as an actual person not as a brand you know what i mean how am how is my actions going to influence my environment and my community so pushing through that i guess like you know that's um that's the strategy that we'll use, we'll Brilliant. use connecting with the human being connecting with your audience not just as an influencer but as your fellow human being face to face same, standing on the same ground more human angle yeah empathy Brilliant. Empathy. Like Olive said, we've seen a lot of black sportsmen and women standing up against injustices over time. Muhammad Ali went to jail because he refused to serve in the Vietnamese war because he knew that the people being sent were basically the black people. Now we're seeing this with Colin Kaepernick. He's becoming a face for injustice for our entire generation. And it seems great, Miles, but unfortunately it doesn't seem that great to a great number of the American people today. We have seen some horrific videos emerging of people burning their Nike trainers, etc., and doing all sorts, saying that this is against our country, men and women that are serving in the army. This is against our our national anthem and everything the United States stands for. Yet, what is your take on that? Um, well, you know, as I feel like Nike is doing a great job, and I wear Nikes, I'm sure you do as well. Yes. Um, in regards to this campaign and in regards to the backlash, it's about time that the people of color can recognize and can connect with brand adverts now. You know, you see all these. Um, sportsmen and celebrities and actors and actresses you know when they're talking about their journey and one of the main things you know why they decide to embark on that journey is because they never saw people that they could connect they, that they could connect with growing up on screen and you know in magazines and in newspapers and on TV and it's great that they're finally solving that issue and also putting serious issues to the public which is people of color People of color should not be hidden. And I feel like in regards to Nike's brand, they're just basically trying to let you know that, look, the reason why they chose Colin, I, I would like to believe, is that he is a spokesman of equality on any level, be it race, be it um, gender, be it sportsmanship. And I feel like equality should be the frontier. 
And not, he's not even just paying lip service. Beyond speaking against these things, he's doing the work. He's working the talk, you know, at the end of the day. He gave about a million dollars to charity. Let's yeah. bring this back home to Nigeria. How well accepted will this be in Nigeria? There's several issues that we can speak against in Nigeria that we love our celebrities and our influencers and our athletes to lend their voice to. We don't see a lot of that happening as much. Some of them try, but... How would you rate the performance of our influencers and our celebrities with regards to speaking against injustice in Nigeria? And how well accepted would it be by the Nigerian audience? Um, well, I feel like the Nigerian audience, it's, it's very tricky, you know. Um, we live in a country that is very um, restricted to an extent. So you being a freedom fighter, you trying to push an agenda, it's very limiting. So in Nigeria, it's a very dicey situation for you to do that. and. Um, yeah, the celebrities now, they're trying as hard as they can, but there's only so much you can do here. I mean, we have Sam Sultan speaking, he, yeah. he fought vehemently against the pol police brutality SARS campaign, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Faust the bad guy pushing so much, you know, for elections and with what he's doing with Leila on the couch. There's several others, but it's not as much as we want it to be. There are pockets here and there. We look forward to seeing more people using their platform to be able to speak up against, against the ills going on in our country. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Definitely. But what would you say, what advice would you give to Nigerian influencers who do want to use their platform to influence people in the right way? What would you say to them? I would say, um, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love just that. do it, just do it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's your platform. As long as you're not um, creating havoc or translating your message maliciously, I feel like, you know, it could work. Just do it. Just do it. Miles, thank you so much for thank joining us so to discuss this. Me. And of course, the conversation continues on social media. Let us know exactly what you think about the Nike 30 Year Just Do It campaign. You can hit up Olive at Olive and Modi and, of course, me at LJS Online. Miles, how can people contact you for further information? Um, our Instagram page is fnrpr.africa. Then you can check us on um, our website at frprojects.co. FRprojects.co. .co. Yeah. Okay, that is great. So if you do want some PR help, Miles is your guy. <laughs> but thank, thank you, you so all so much, much for joining us for another episode of Hello Nigeria. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.